welcome to Telugovan Academy. Today, we are going to talk about tourism in geography class. So, in uh, AP Tourism, like, we do have center-funded uh, projects also. Even center also funds projects for, uh, uh, like, uh, for cities or states which do have the potential for tourism attractions. So, Andhra Pradesh Tourism is a pioneer in development and completion of center-funded projects. In that, under Swadeshi Darshan, under Swadeshi Darshan and Prasad schemes, we do have uh, Central Government of India has two projects, uh, famous projects related to tourism. They are called Swadeshi Darshan and Prasad scheme. APTDC, that is Andhra Pradesh Tourism Development Corporation, has completed the execution of three projects under Swadeshi and uh, Prasad scheme. That Kakinada Coastal Tourism Circuit, one is Kakinada Coastal Tourism Circuit, next one is Nellur Coastal Tourism Circuit, and Pilgrimage Tourism in Pilgrimage Tourism Circuit in Amravati. So, uh, Kakinada Coastal Tourism Circuit and uh, Nellur Coastal Tourism Circuit and Pilgrimage Tourism Circuit in Amravati comes under the nas uh, national funded, centre funded schemes. And the tourism development of Swadesh Darshan and Prasad. Apart from these, the other projects which are funded by center in the uh, under the project of Swadesh Darshan and Prasad scheme are one is Buddhist circuit development, and next is Sri Sailam Temple Pilgrimage, Tourism Development and Simhachalam temple uh, pilgrimage tourism development so this buddhist circuit development means they connect all the sites all the uh, aramas or vihara of the buddhist centers and next is sri salem temple pilgrimage circuit sri salem temple uh, markapur so that is famous for uh, mallikarjuna swami temple this is also this is sri salem temple pilgrimage circuit next is simhachalam temple pilgrimage center that is circuit. That is in Vishakapatnam. Simhachalam Temple Pilgrimage Circuit Development. Tourism Development. These are all the center funded uh, programs in the, uh, the part of in the project of Swadesh Darshan and Prasad Screen. I will explain you Prasad Screen as we further progress in the class. So next is Blue Flag Certification. What is a blue flag certification? A place, a tourist center, uh, anything which uh, uh, coveted with the tag or title of blue flag certification means it should have best safety, safety wise international standards. Uh, next is uh, environmentally it should contain international standards. We will see. So in AP Rushikonda Beach, in Vishakhapatnam has been conferred the coveted blue flag beach. So again Rishikonda. Rishikonda in Vishakhapatnam beach has been coveted with or awarded with blue flag beach. It means a blue flag beach tag is a testimony of the highest standards of safety, quality and environmental sustainability followed at the beach and will place the beach on the international map. So, if any place or you take anything, beach or anything, which has been given blue flag tag means it should have highest qualities. It should have highest qualities of like safety, next quality, uh, next environmental sustainability. It should, means it should be in a position to attract even international tourists. So, they doesn't feel after coming uh, to that place, okay, this is what have we heard a lot about this, but it doesn't seem to be so. They should not get disappointed. So, Rishikonda is a first place, Rishikonda Beach in Vishakhapatnam is a first place to get this blue flag tag. And other proposed beaches by APTA or other proposed 21 places by APTA beaches across the state for blue flag certification of which nine have been shortlisted. So, APTA uh, has proposed 21 more beaches in that nine have been, nine beaches have been shortlisted 
but for now we have only one blue flag tag beach that is blue flag certification beach that is a rishikonda beach in vishakhapatnam so prasad scheme coming to prasad scheme prasad scheme and apdts has completed the execution of three projects that we have seen nellur coastal tourism circuit kakinada coastal tourism circuit and pilgrimage in amravati so upcoming or buddhist circuit development shri sailam simhachalam these are under the blue flag scheme even uh even these these places have also have been proposed by aptdc aptdc in this nine have been listed we have said we, these are under the blue flag scheme so these all are funded by center they came under swadeshi darshan and prasad scheme if a place is given blue flag certification means it is been funded by the center it is been funded by the center under swadeshi darshan scheme and prasad scheme so that is the reason like for that reason state government uh, tourism department tries to make a place in the that standard so that it can attain the certification of blue flag so that it it is been total it is been funded by the central government so what is this prasad scheme so the government of india launched the prasad scheme in the year 2014 and 15 even swadeshi program swadeshi darshan also in 2014 and 15 only under the ministry of tourism then what is this what is the full form of this prasad scheme pilgrimage rejuvenation and spiritual augmentation drive what is that Spir uh, pilgrimage rejuvenation and spiritual augmentation drive in pilgrimage rejuvenation and spiritual augmentation drive so all the places which are spiritually religious pilgrimages places spiritual places have been uh, connected or have been recognized in this scheme so that they can be developed further for the religious uh, from the pilgrimages all over the india or internationally so the scheme focuses on developing and identifying pilgrimage site across india for enriching the religious tourism experiences so so many people we have heard that uh, badrinath kedarnath or kashi banaras so all over the country so many people like religiously once in a lifetime they wish to visit those places for the people like that for the people like that all over india so these places are been identified and they have been developed for spiritual and religious purposes it it aims to integrate pilgrimage destination in a prioritized planned and sustainable manner to provide a complete religious tourism experiences so in this prasad scheme what they do is like um they identify particular typical places and uh, they develop connectivity they develop other lodging and boarding facilities or transportation facilities like that so even we can have, we do have this ramayan train ramayan train recently it has been launched ramayan train uh, which connects all the places related to uh, god rama all the places from the ayodhya birth place to all other places all over country so it is nearly of 20 days trip i think only uh, it, even like that train is like a you say oriental express so it connects all the places related to ramayan and god rama so the growth of domestic tourism hugely depends on pilgrim tourism pilgrimage tourism yeah if we want to attract domestic tourists means we have to because domestic tourists are attracted uh, only mostly in the cases of tourism because almost india has the same kind of climate same kind of 
more or less we do share same kind of climate apart from the extreme northern regions so what is the other attraction for the apart from this what can we attract tourists all over from pan india domestic tourists only pilgrimage like we'll wish to visit tirupati balaji all over india because there is only one balaji that is in tirumala so all over india okay we have heard of balaji we want to visit balaji now so because they are indians there's nothing more apart from there but only balaji is the main attraction so domestic tourists love to visit when there is any particular pilgrimage they are spiritually inclined so that's the reason they want to uh, improve this uh, those sites those kind of sites so for tapping the potential of pilgrimage tourism there is a need for holistic development of the selected pilgrimage destinations by the government along with the cooperation of other stakeholders other stakeholders means it can be uh, state governments or private firms or lodges tourism private tourists private travels or uh, like uh, or uh, government travels and tours all thing the prasad scheme aims at paving the way for the development and promotion of religious tourism in india the main intention of main aim of prasad tourism is to develop religious tourism religious tourism in india so this uh, name of this prasad tourism has been changed to prashad earlier it was only prasad p r a s a d now it has been changed into p r a s h a d they have added they have added heritage earlier it was pilgrimage rejuvenation and spiritual augmentation drive now it is pilgrimage rejuvenation and spiritual heritage augmentation drive apart from uh, spiritual and religious they even added heritage sites also in that so that in october 2017 so who is the implementing agency of this prashad scheme is the projects identified under scheme shall be implemented through the identified agencies by the respective state governments union territories or union territory governments so center funds that who identifies state governments or UN, ut governments will identify that they'll uh, propose this place site example we can say Simhachalam Simhachalam is a very religious place most visited religious place north coast uh, and ap north coastal ap so if state governments identified simhachalam as a, a press, it comes under prashad scheme they'll recommend for the uh, union government or national government so they'll recognize this place they fund this and state governments will develop the local governments will develop this uh, place uh in ap we do have pancharamas pancharamas means five places related to god shiva uh ap government has a program uh, nearly in the ma- uh, month of november and december that is in which comes under kartik masam it, it comes to hindu calendar so uh, in in one day in one day they'll take you to the all places of this pancharamas all the five places of this a uh, temple all the five temples in single day if you start early in the morning by 5:30 or 6 o'clock by night 12 or 1 again you will be in your city so this is a, a very um, successful uh, pro- program of uh, tourism development aptdc So, what are these Pancharamas? Pancharamas are the five ancient Hindu temples of AP related to God Shiva. Amra, one is the first one is Amravati. Amravati is in Gundu district. It is the abode of God Amareshwara. Means Shiva is called God Shiva is called as Amareshwara in Amravati. Next one is Daksharama. Next one is Daksharama. 
that, that is in East Godavari, near to Samarla Kota. It comes near to Samarla Kota. And next one is Kshira Ramam. Kshira Ramam, that is in Palakulu. Palakulu, that is also in East, East Godavari. Next uh, is Kumara Ramam, that is in Samarla Kota, that also is in East Godavari. Next one is in Bhima Ramam, that is in Bhimavara, Bhimeshwara Swami Temple, that comes under West Godavari. So, these all these five places of ancient Hindu uh, ancient Hindu temples of Lord Shiva are called together called as Pancharamas. Together called as Pancharamas, Pancharama Kshetralu. So now coming to ecotourism. So government has started ecotourism. Ecotourism means like sustainability while generating income. Uh, and but also it should be a sustainable ecotourism, environmental friendly. So uh, government has started ecotourism initiatives by taking of creation of new community based ecotourism centers and strengthening the existing ecotourism centers by the forest department and local tribes. So already we do have ecotourism centers and Apart from that, it has taken the initiative of developing new ecotourism centers, means environmentally sustainable centers with the help of forest department and local tribes of that place, that particular place. So, uh, in that pro scheme, in the program, we do have Nagaravanams. Nagaravanams or city forest. Nagaravante city kada. Vana Mante Adavikada, so city forest. So, are proposed for providing wholesome living environment and contributing to smart, clean, green, and healthy cities to urbanities. So, all the urban places are turning into concrete jungles. We know that 10 to 15 years back, if uh, a place, uh, some greenery exists somewhere. After 15 years that you see a very tall uh, like uh, skyscrapers out there. So in coming 20 or 30 years, every city almost in India will become as a concrete jungle. Hardly we will get to see greenery unless until we plan and make it, we leave it a particular section or place for the uh, specifically for greenery itself. So in that scenario, Ecotourism development have planned Nagaravanams, Nagaravanalu, in that we do have smart, clean, sustainable, healthy cities in urbanities, in cities, in metros. So, so far there are 22 Nagaravanams are completed and open for public. Till now, how many uh, Nagaravanams? 22 Nagaravanams have been completed and has been approved for public. They are open to public, like people are access, accessing it. In addition to the Nagaravanams, a total of seven temple eco parks are proposed to encourage the pilgrims to visit the temples. Apart from these Nagaravanams, there are there are 22 Nagaravanams. Apart from that, there are seven temple eco pilgrimage parks. Next is Vanavihari. Vanavihari also comes under eco tourism. What is this Vanavihari? The state has started the scheme for creation of new community based ecotourism centers and strengthening the existing ecotourism centers inside the forest area and also develop cottage, dormitories, nature camps, nature trails, boating, watchtowers, interpretation centers, etc. and state. Yeah. Apart from the existing eco one, one we have means allowing people. Uh, to enjoy the real feel of forest. For that reason, they are creating uh, dormitories, camps, campfire tents, hotels in the mid of the, in the uh, uh, deep of the forest. In the deep forest. Like boating or watchtowers. Example, you can take Arku. If you been to Arku or Burra Caves, Arku, you see campfires all over the road. Campfires in the mid jungles. They allow campfires for a particular uh, set of people, like they do, sorry, camps, camps with campfires and boating, all other like uh, rock climbing and next uh, trekking and all. So they are encouraging Vana Vihari, means allowing people to stay in the forest, enjoy that nature 
as it is without in without spoiling the nature next apfdc that is andhra pradesh for, uh, forest development corporation has developed rajiv eco park in it edupulapaya of vyasar kadpa district so apfdc have uh, developed one eco friendly park that is called as rajiv rajiv eco park at edupulapaya of vyasar kadpa district eco tourism centers at muttayya palam near surya lanka beach it's a very big tourist attraction people from all over come to uh, visit surya lanka beach there they have developed eco tourism center near, near muttayya palam and anantagiri near araku araku hills are called anantagiri hills so there also they have developed one eco friendly park or established with the nature education camps and other amenities so aptd is andhra pradesh tourism development corporation this is the fully owned by ap government undertaking this is fully owned by ap government undertaking created various taken products all over ap in providing service to the visiting tourists so aptds is a fully owned undertaking by government this is the whole and sole responsibility uh, responsible corporation for development providing infrastructure uh, uh, all other things related to tourism so the key objectives of the corporation are to develop tourism infrastructure development operation of hotels and catering units they do have chain of hotels name uh, named as harita and punnami so punnami hotels and harita hotels are the aptdc run uh, hotels they are aptdc run hotels they are called harita and punnami harita resorts have you heard i think you heard of that harita resorts and punnami resorts resorts or hotels harita hotels so almost in every attraction tourist place of ap you'll get to see harita hotels or punnami resorts punnami hotels so preparation of hotels and catering units operation of guided and package tours leisure cruises pleasure boating activities sound and light shows and ropeway for the purpose of administration the state has been divided into seven divisions this uh, they'll take care of all the recreational all the uh, infrastructure facilities uh, all like related to like food hotel lodging boating other adventure sports light shows any attraction for the attraction of tour, uh, tourists for what any kind of attraction of tourists who is the authorities who will take care is aptdc will take care so for the purpose of administration they have divided state into seven divisions they have divided state into how many divisions seven divisions one is kakinada division in that east godavari and west godavari comes under kakinada division means whatever development in east and west godavari uh, will take place that uh, aptdc of kakinada division will take care of that next one is visakhapatnam division in that vizag shrikakulam and vijayanagaram all the three northern districts all the three northern districts next is vijayawada division in that we'll have krishna and gundu districts next one is nellore division in that nellore and prakasam so tirupati division chitur this is exclusively only for chitur next one is kadapa division in that vyasar kadapa karnool division means karnool and anantapur so for the purpose of administration aptdc have developed the state into seven divisions that's all for today thank you